Hey, what's up guys? So if you're anything like me, every time you use your lab equipment, you run in after you're done using it to make sure that you turned it off. And uh, this is especially bad with uh, devices like soldering irons and hot glue guns and things like that. And uh, of course, every time, you know, you did turn it off, but it's even worse if you leave the house or leave town. You know, you're always wondering, did I turn the soldering iron off? And it'll just drive you nuts. Um, especially when you're working on a project, you know, you're so involved with, with, with what you're doing, you know, it's easy to forget to turn things off or, or to remember that you turned it off. So anyway, what I came up with here is a simple little device that uh, automatically turns off power to the outlets um, after 30 minutes of use, okay? And I've got a little button box here hooked up so I can turn it on. So this will be mounted up, up, up top on my bench. And so when I want power, I just hit the green button, and then when I kill it, just hit the stop button. And while the green button is engaged, after 30 minutes, it will automatically turn off. So it's kind of cool, and I've got a uh, little Arduino board or a little microcontroller board uh, hooked in there to this existing outlet here, and uh, we'll walk through basically what I did here. So this is an off-the-shelf. I'm going to go ahead and unplug it here. So this is an off-the-shelf, uh, I don't know what you call these outlet timers. They're kind of like, they've got this little control panel there, and then you can set the time and the schedule you want power to be, to be applied to your outlets. So it's like good for you know, indoor lighting that you just want on all the time, turn off at night or whatever, you know. So um, I knew, though, that this was the perfect candidate for this hack because this little timer control uh, panel here obviously has low voltage on it to run all of its brains here so I could use that low voltage to power my own microcontroller and also it had a control signal leaving this board to the outlets to turn them on and off so it what it already had the relays and the driver and all that stuff built in um, so obviously this is dealing with AC mains so everything I was doing I had to be very careful I did not work live at all um, and, and it's you can do this in a very safe way, and I'll explain how I did that. So the first thing I did was I pulled off this little timer uh, part here, and this it was just a simple screw. Pulled that out, and it was connected down to the power board with a five-pin terminal or a five-pin ribbon cable. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so it connected down to the power board with that five pin ribbon cable, and now you see that I've cut this board off and hooked up my own Arduino compatible uh, little microcontroller board there. And uh, this is pretty basic, and you know, I really didn't have to work live at all. Uh, so, so I had to first locate the low voltage. You know, what, what voltage could I use to power? my board and of course you know this is all AC mains so that low voltage could be referenced to the neutral line or even the hot line coming in from the wall so even though I'm measuring 3 volts DC across it with a meter my uh, digital meter here the, the battery powered meter it could be floating up to line voltage so even though you think it's safe it's not at all so that's so basically though when I looked at this board here I pulled this out. I have no idea. I know I'm kind of all over the place here, but I have no idea how that steps that voltage down. In fact, they use security screws here to hold this case together, and I really don't care. But to me, it looks like a transformer-less power supply, probably some kind of RC divider, uh, and then rectify it down, and then regulate after that. Something kind of like that. And I really, again, I don't care what it is because... I'm only dealing with the circuitry down on this little timer board. And right away, I noticed that we have an electrolytic capacitor. So no doubt that's for our bulk capacitance. That's where the main uh, voltage would feed into, and that's where it's filtered for the brains of this little board here. So I hooked up some, jumper, some jumpers to that little capacitor there. I actually soldered little wires to it, of course, when things were not powered on. Then I hooked my fluke up to that with it set for uh, DC volts and measured about 3.4 volts. Bingo. So there is our low voltage supply. And then I, with the continuity meter on the, the meter here set, I went and traced out which 
uh, conductors from that ribbon cable went to that capacitor, and it was the first. Um, it was the first two conductors here. So the first one was the 3.4 volts. The second one was ground, or what we're calling ground in this system. Okay, so now I located those two. Then I went and, um, well, what I did next was I then needed to find where the control signal was. So then I soldered little wires onto the other three conductors. This is a five uh, conductor ribbon cable. So I soldered little wires onto those other three conductors. And with reference to the ground of this board and my meter, I was able to find a signal leaving this that went to 3.4 volts when the outlets were turned on. So from this little timer panel here, we've got an override switch so we can force the outlets to turn on. So I push that button on, watch my meter, and sure enough, I would see 3.4 volts on the third conductor here. So right in the middle there. So it went uh, 3.4 volts, ground, and then the control signal out to the outlets. So pretty simple. So now I have the whole picture and I went ahead and cut the ribbon cable and now I'm ready to hijack it into my uh, microcontroller board. And what I wanted to do just to confirm everything is I actually uh, stripped away all the insulation and I hooked up some jumper wires from the 3.4 volts over to that control signal just to confirm that if I apply 3.4 volts there, it does turn the outlets on. And sure enough, it did. By the way, I'm doing all this with just jumpers, and then I go and I plug this in, and then I, I was actually using this uh, strip here, this outlet strip here. So I, I just to apply power, I just had to hit the, the switch there, and uh, that that was able to keep everything safe. And I'd unplug it just in case I'd forget, you know. So it's all just being very safe. Your hands aren't in there doing anything. You're just hooking up leads, and then you apply power. You, you, uh, you make your observations, kill power, write things down, and that's kind of how I did the whole thing. All right, so the other thing I wanted to do there is I know that now 3.4 volts applied to that control wire, turn the outlets on. I wanted to know if there was an intermediate relay driver. You know, like, am I driving the relay directly from this board? You know, because now, I, you know, I don't know... I don't know what kind of relays in there. It could be a pretty beefy relay with some serious coil currents. And if that's the case from the microcontroller here, I would have to add in some kind of relay driver to drive with that, that current. So I wanted to measure the actual current. And with that third conductor, I hooked up my meter, uh, put it in uh, uh, current mode, and measured the current through that conductor from the 3.4 uh, volt line. It measured a couple milliamps, so no big deal there. And uh, that tells me that the driver is down on this board. So that's probably feeding, you know, maybe the gate of a, a BJT transistor, maybe even an optocoupler, something like that. So anyway, I don't care. But all, all I did care about was that it was low current and I could drive that directly off of my uh, microcontroller board here and by the way this is still I just have it out like this to show you what's going on I plan on buttoning all of this up sticking it in there tidying it up and then trying to put this back on there so it's all touch safe and all of those kinds of things uh, this box here by the way um, is just a I'll, I'll put a link in the description to where I got this but this is nothing more than just a little switch box when you push the green button, it closes the contacts, and then I've got some lamp cord going over it. I drilled a little hole in this, and one conductor is going to ground. The other is going to digital pin. We'll look it up when I get to the code. But digital pin 3, which is an interrupt enabled pin, and I also have the in internal pull-up enabled. So when you push this, it's actually pulling that pin low. Okay. And uh, so power and ground. And then I have that third pin hooked up right to uh, digital pin two on the board. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So not a whole lot. Now, what I did was I wrote some test code first, just toggling that pin three, uh, powered it from my, I'm looking for it now, powered it directly from my USB to serial converter, 3.3 volts. I backfed it without any power applied to the box just so I could program the microcontroller 
So I programmed it, removed the programmer. Obviously you have to remove this because again, the ground here could be floating at AC mains voltage. This ground is not. So you don't want to damage anything. So program the code, remove the programmer, and then put plug this into the wall and ran a test. And everything tested out great. So I went ahead and completed writing the code here. And uh, this is it. There's really not a lot going on here. In fact, it could be even uh, easier than this, but I decided to sleep the micro controller when it was not powering the relay. So it only woke up when it had to actually drive the relay out. So anyway, let me just burn through this real quick. So we've got the relay pin, the button pin, and I just wanted to show you the 328 board here. So this is my own uh, little Arduino compatible board. It's not compatible with the pinout, but it is preloaded with the Arduino mini bootloader. So you can program it straight from the IDE. And uh, just to show you, we're using digital pin two there and digital pin three. And that's an interrupt enabled pin there, int one. So uh, that's what I'm using for this. And uh, there'll be some information in the description below on where you can get your own. Okay, so anyway, down here in the setup, we've, we've got our two uh, outside world pins there. The relay pin hooked up as an output. The button pin, input pull up. Attach an interrupt to that, it's interrupt one. Calls button pressed function there when it is uh, triggered on the falling edge and I'll jump down here is that routine and uh, and then we'll jump right into the setup here so uh, yeah the first thing we do though is just go to sleep so when you first power it up plug it into the wall I don't actually want it to turn on I want it to immediately go to sleep so that's what it's doing here uh, and you see here we actually pull this code in from another project I did a while back on how to sleep the microcontroller so at this point, it's sleeping at like three microamps, and it'll immediately go to sleep, kill the ADC, we're not doing anything with it, and then just wait for the interrupt to get triggered on a button press. So when that occurs, we, the button is pressed, turns the relay on, enables the 30 minute timer, and resets the one second timer tick. Okay, and then we grab, of course, a reference for the timer start time. And then we're back in the loop here. So if the digital read of that button pin is high, we know that the button is in the stop position. And at that point, turn off the relay and then go back to sleep. Okay. And otherwise, we've just, we increment the one second timer here. Timer enabled, of course, it has to be true. And if the millis, the continually, continually millis, millisecond timer there is uh, you know that's continuously counting we subtract that from our start time if it's ever greater than 1000 we've got our one second tick reset it there increment the one second tick and then of course when that hits 1800 or greater we've got our 30 minutes kill the relay and go back to sleep so that's all there is to the code and again you know this was programmed everything powered off unhooked from the outlet and uh, tested and this is good to go. So I'll probably make a follow-up video once I got everything buttoned up and tidied and you know got the covers on and it's all safe and give you an update there. So anyway, just a quick project there wanted to show you. Uh, thanks for watching.